Now, one of the most frequently asked questions I get regarding ESA fonts, which are embroidery specific alphabets, they're object based, they're not stitch files, is how much can they be resized? Now, the answer to that question is there's really not that many limitations with regards how large you can go, how small you can go, there is more limitations, but if you know how to use the software, edit the file, you can accomplish pretty much everything with a little bit of editing. We're going to take a font that is digitized at 15 millimeters in height, and that means it's about half an inch, maybe a little more, a little less, depending on whether it's an upper or lower case, and we're going to change that from 15 millimeters all the way up to three inches in height. So we're going from half an inch to up to three inches. And I'm gonna show you how you can accomplish embroidery magic with ESA fonts. First off, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy these videos. And if you do, make sure you hit that subscribe button and hit that bell so you can be notified every time we release a new video. Now, this lettering is 15 millimeters in height, which means that it is about 0.6 inches in height. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that and I'm going to change it to three inches, hit the enter, and I can see that this is now a very large design and it all has satin stitches, which is the way it was originally programmed. Now, while it is selected, I'm gonna hit the H key and that will allow me to adjust the spacing. And I'm gonna adjust the spacing a little bit before I get started. I'm going to plan on not having a satin stitch, but I'm gonna convert this to a fill. But even when I convert it to a fill, I have to be careful because the fill stitches are going to give it kind of a, a different appearance. And I'm gonna actually clean it up a little bit more and turn it even uh, into a cleaner looking design. So if I turn off the true view on this and if I zoom into some of these areas, you're going to see that I have some stitches here that they change in appearance. I can see that it's a staggered line and a solid line here. That means that the machine is going to activate trims and jumps anywhere the stitch gets too wide. And I definitely don't want that to happen. It's called invisible embroidery. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this design here, which is a satin stitch, and I could very easily just convert it to a fill. Now this fill stitch will run out you know, pretty well, it's gonna look good, but I do have stitches that are changing directions and it might not you know, be the appearance that I really want as an end product. So we're gonna take this a step further and show you how we can make this even more professional with better runtime and cleaner results. Now to take this to the next level, I'm gonna take that first L and I'm going to duplicate it and it's going to give me a second L at the bottom of my sewing order in my sequence view. And I'm gonna bring that up so that I have two L's on top of each other. But I'm gonna take that second L and I'm going to change that one to a satin stitch about two millimeters in width. So now I have a satin around that. Now what I can do is I can take that first fill and I'm going to tell it to remove the stitch angle so it no longer turns, but I have a nice fill with a border around the edge. Now if I go to the next letter, I can zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna do essentially the same thing. I'm gonna grab all the elements of that letter. If I turn my true view off, I can grab those pieces. And if I look at this, actually I can see that there's one area right here that I might want to adjust. So I'm gonna take this one here, I'm gonna hit the H key, I'm gonna grab these two, and I'm just gonna make sure that these definitely touch because I'm gonna actually uh, group or weld these together and I wanna make sure that everything welds properly. So all my areas are overlapping. Now I'm gonna tell it to weld that. When it welds it, it changed it to a fill stitch. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab that now and I'm going to duplicate it. And when I duplicated that, it's going to give me that E at the very end and I'm going to do the same thing, bring it over to here and let's change that to an outline and let's change that to two millimeters as well. So now I can see that I have an outline there. Now what I might want to do is grab that and I'm just going to hit the H and I'm going to adjust my, uh, uh, remove my stitch directions so that it's all one angle just like the previous one is. And now all I have to do is go through each of these letters and do the same thing. I'm going to grab the objects, I'm going to weld them together, I'm going to put a border around them and I'll have a design that's going to look 10 times cleaner than just a regular fill stitch that's turning.
Now I've grabbed the last two objects in my Y and I'm going to weld those together. I'm going to get rid of the stitch angle so it's all one angle. I'm going to duplicate that one as well and then I'm going to change that to a outline and a satin stitch with a two millimeter border and then I just have to move this one underneath of the C so that everything stitches together perfectly. Turn on my true view, go to full scale and I can see that I have a really cool fill design with a nice clean two millimeter border around the outside. That was super easy, super fast, just understanding the tools of the software. And the only thing I'm gonna do now is grab all of the fill areas and I can adjust the underlay of them so that I don't have quite as much stitch time. So if I go to my stitching effects and I look at my underlay I really don't need an edge run there so I'm just going to turn those off for now turn back the underlay just have it to Tommy and I'm going to have the spacing set at around five millimeters so that's going to cut down the stitch count quite a bit then I can unselect those and I can just also check all of my satin stitches so I'm just very quickly grabbing all of those and I'm looking I do not want it to Tommy I might want to have an edge run that's going to give me a nice clean edge on most fabric types and if I look at my stitch count I think it went down from uh, I think it was 28,000 down to 24 so saved a bunch of stitches it's going to sew out better it's going to look cleaner and uh, let's see the sample well once again the proof is in the stitching you can see embroidery magic come alive we have a 15 millimeter font that's been taken up to three inches and it looks super clean so see you next time